Hey, welcome everybody. Good to see everybody again today. Uh, just a little recap on Saturday night. Uh, what a tremendous night for the Tiger family. Uh, all the way from the Tiger Walk to the, the stadium, uh, 60 minutes, played with energy and efficiency with the football team. I uh, thought our team operated very well for the first time together. I was excited about the sideline. I was excited about everybody into it. I was excited about going in at halftime, uh, be able to make adjustments with our football team, coming out and playing 60 minutes of football. Uh, going into the game, we knew that we had a tough opponent, and uh, I was very pleased with our preparation throughout the week. We took it on a daily basis. Uh, we had a, some ob obstacles to overcome during the early part of the week, but we did it and uh, showed in our work and our preparation. I was excited about the efficiency on offense, I thought it was a great job by Steve Ensminger calling the plays. I like the diversity. I like the way he mixed his personnel, run, pass. Uh, obviously, all the yards that we gained and the things that uh, we accomplished, but that wasn't the uh, goal. The goal was to be very efficient and be multiple, uh, put the ball in our playmakers' hands in space and let them play. And he did a very good job of that. We had two over 200. Two 100-yard rushers. I uh, thought our offensive line played very well. But, again, this was about the offense operating all 11 at one time. On defense, you got to give some credit to David Randa and our staff, along with Pete Jenkins and Corey and, and Meatball. They did a tremendous job of defending a very, very explosive offense. To hold them to seven points was a tremendous job. I thought our DBs had our best game of the year. Uh, we played some tight coverage. We played some man-to-man -man coverage. Uh, we only allowed six, I believe, one ball. Tredavious White had an excellent night. We broke some balls up. We had a good pass rush. Uh, Devon Gacho had two sacks in the night. He played his best game, and uh, they had only given up one sack the whole year. So we're excited about that. We're excited about this week, obviously. Uh, will be a tremendous challenge to go on the road, take the Tigers on the road, to a very good uh, Florida Gator football team playing in the swamp. And I know our guys are going to be excited. This is a rivalry game for us, and we understand that. But nothing's going to change. This is going to be the plan that we have for the week. Today's Tell the Truth Monday. We'll get the guys in today, and we're going to tell the truth about the game, good, bad, and indifferent, and cover everything and, and fix us first. And our guys are going to be excited about that. Uh, going on to Florida a little bit to give you a scout report. Obviously, they're four and one, 18 to AP uh, and coaches poll. I think they're a very well coached football team. Jim Malcolm has a lot of respect among our staff. He's one of the better coaches around the country. We understand that. Uh, Mike Simmons is the offensive line coach and worked with me at previous stops. He does a very good job. I think their defensive uh, coordinator, Jeff Collins, is one of the top young coaches in the country. Randy Shannon and I worked together at uh, the University of Miami. Uh, those guys have a tremendous staff, and they're a very well-coached football team. On off, uh, First of all, I want to say their turnover margin is plus five. I'm proud to say that we're plus one in the game. Uh, we're plus one for our new season. It's a, it's a positive start. They're plus five in the turnover ratio to me. That's the most important stat. Uh, they have eight interceptions and two fumble recoveries, so they're, they're very active on defense. On offense, they're a pro-style system, 21, 12, and 11 personnel, eight return starters. They're averaging 407 yards a game, scored 28.4 points a game. They have three good running backs that run the ball very well. In fact, they use four sometimes. You know, the wide receivers are quick, as far as wide receivers always are. They're playmakers. They are a big offensive line. Uh, their right tackle with their freshman is one of the best offensive linemen that we're going to play this year. They're very well coached. They're a zone-blocking team. They're a power team. They all work together. They come off the ball well. We studied them extensively this morning. Austin Appleby has been playing, but probably the – the starting quarterback is going to be Del Rio, who I'm very familiar with because I know his dad very well. Top players on offense are Jordan Scarlett. Running back has 55 rushes, 274 yards, four TDs. Antonio Cannaway, number 81, sophomore wide receiver, has 20 catches for 371 yards. On defense, very good. Like I said, Jeff Collins is a, 
is a, is a, is a great defensive coordinator. I know him from the days of Mississippi State. He's a friend of mine, and he, and he has a lot of respect from our staff. Multiple scheme, 4-3, four, 3-4, three, three, four, and Oki has seven returning starters. They don't, they're giving up only 230 yards per game, as you guys know, a second in the NCAA. Uh, our top players on defense is T. Stabler, one of the top cornerbacks in the country. Jared Davis, number 40, a middle linebacker, leads the team in tackles, and he's very active. Caleb Brantley, who was a young man that was highly recruited as a defensive tackle, very strong and powerful. On special teams, their kickoff specialist, Eddie Panario, has 75% touchback ratio, and a punter, Johnny Thompson, number 19, has nine punts down inside the 20. Uh, before I take any questions, I just want to tell you a little story. <laughs> you may have heard it in the second quarter. My son, Tyler's on the side, and I said, we had just scored. I gave him a high five. He whispered, hey, Dad, Parker just caught his first touchdown. Yeah, all right, man. And after the game, I said, hey, Park, hey, way to go, man. First touchdown. I said, Dad, I'm so proud of you. So it was just a great night for the Orgeron family. I want to thank you guys. But on to Florida. You know, we have a 24-hour rule. We want to feel good about this win, but after we watch – we watched the film today. It's going to be on to the Florida Gators. Okay, any questions? Right here on your left. Um, yeah. You said last week that you were going to let your coaches coach, and, and yeah. Innsminger said kind of the same thing uh, last night on radio that uh, when it came to substitutions and all that, he let the position coaches yeah. decide. When it came to the game plan, how much back and forth did you see from the offensive room and Cragthorpe and, and guys like that? Well, you know, we all work together as a staff, and um, everybody managed their own group. Everybody had their own ideas. Uh, we put them together, and the big thing was marrying them to the old system and to put our players in the best position that they can perform with the same language but running different plays and making them look different from different formations. And I think our guys did a, a tremendous job doing that. Oh, oh could you give us a status on Leonard? You know, I, I said yesterday somebody quoted it, uh, and I thought he was going to play. I talked to Jack today. I think it's going to be day by day. I don't even know if he's going to practice today or tomorrow. Uh, we're going to have to see as the week goes by. That's the honest thing. I don't know if he's going to play. To the left in the middle. A little follow-up to Shay's question um, about the staff and delegation. Do you feel like – it looked like there were obvious changes. Do you feel like previously the staff's input was – was taken into consideration and respected? You know, it, it's, whatever happened in the past happened. You know, I'm not into that. Uh, we were given an excellent opportunity. I'm going to thank Joe Oliva for that. And, uh, you know, we're just moving forward. Whatever happened in the past, we know we have a system today that we want to run, we believe in it, and we're going forward. It's a new season. And one follow-up as well about Leonard is, for a guy who's had so much success, and now he's been on the bench for two games this season, is it difficult at all to keep him engaged? Well, uh, you know, sometimes it can be, but, he, he, you know, Leonard's a different cat. Uh, Leonard has a high character. He's a team guy. He wants the team to, to win, have success. I think he was happy to see the offense have success. I think he was happy to see uh, Geis and Williams have such a successful night. And I'm sure, I'm sure that he wants to get back in there as soon as he possibly can. Yeah, yeah. Um, could you talk about the running back rotation? Both guys played really well, but the, the fact that you did rotate running backs and you did keep them fresh. Yes, well, we want to rotate our running backs. Again, here's a, a part of the new system. Jabbar Jaluk is the manager of the running backs, and he's going to handle them in, which, in the way he feels that we could have the most success, success, and he did well. And hopefully when Leonard comes in, he's in a rotation, and we can keep those guys fresh. Ed, back here, you talked about the pride you had in the efficiency on offense. Did you practice that? Was that something that, you know, one of those mental notes that you made, did you eliminate yeah. some steps either from the booth down to the field field to the players? Yes. Yes, we, we practiced that on Thursday. We practiced it on Friday. We practiced it on Saturday. I thought the players felt calm. I thought they played, felt confident and energetic in the plan. Uh, we didn't want to put things in that were too difficult, too many checks, too many substitutions. We wanted to play simple, effective football. You know, the goal, I told the guys before the uh, before we left on the bus, I said, hey, man, let's put 11 on the field. 
and let's let's sure let's make sure they're playing hard. And they did that. Well, you know, we we're gonna expound on our package. Obviously, we we're not gonna show them the same thing and run the same play this week and give them what they expect. Uh, Steve and all is gonna make some changes this week. We're gonna see what we can do. But also, we are very effective in doing the things that we did, so we don't want to completely get rid of it. Andrew, hearing you right, you <clears throat> you are a, high, a college player, and what did you take from that when you, you're changing coaches in midseason? So having been a player, what do you have to do in dealing with these guys as yeah. you come in with something new? I think that's a big advantage. That, that you've been through things, that you, you've done the things that they've done, you've been through the practices, you've been through the two days. I remember the coaches that I responded to well. I remember the great teachers. I remember the great motivators. I remember the disciplinarians. Those are the guys I responded to well, the guys that stood up in front of the room, that commanded presence, that you know that they had the knowledge to take you where you wanted to go. You saw them work hard. You saw them enthusiastic. And I try to be that same type of coach, and I think that players respond to that. I believe all players want discipline, all players want structure, and all players want knowledge. Hey, Coach, uh, this is going to feel like 11 a.m. for your players this kickoff this week. How yeah. do you make sure they're up and running and ready to go? Yeah. Well, uh, I kind of have a knack for that. <laughs> I'm an early morning guy, but we thought about it. We planned it out well, but – we're not going to make a big deal out of it. You know, we got a long bus ride there. It's 55 minutes, but we're going to get up there. We're gonna, we have a routine that we're going to do when we get to the – first of all, it's a business trip. When we get to the hotel, we're going to eat supper. We're going to meet. We're going to meet on special teams. We're going to meet on offense, defense, and we have a, a team meeting. They go to chapel. They go to bed. They're going to get up the next morning. They have a meeting. They have a clap session. They eat pregame meal. They're going to get on, on the bus, and we'll get ready to go. And th that's how we do things. Kind of a lighthearted follow-up. We hear you like to drink energy drinks, like a Say lot. Say it again. How many energy drinks do you consume, consume in a day? Enough. <laughs> Coach, back here in the back. Last week, such an emotional week for your guys. The energy in the stadium is tremendous on Saturday night. How do you keep that going and take that yeah. on the road with you this week against Florida? Well, it's part of our program. You know, I think when you come to work, today's about Tell the Truth Monday. We'll tell the truth. Good, bad, and indifferent. Tomorrow's competition Tuesday. Wednesday's no turnover Wednesday for the offense. Turnover Wednesday for the defense. Thursday is, is uh, no repeat Thursday. Friday's focus Friday. You know, you just keep getting them in the routine, and that's part energy. is part of the things that we do. We're going to have energy on the field today, the next day, and the next day, and the next day. I think it's even going to get better than it was because those guys are going to be comfortable. They're going to understand what we expect. I, I believe – Players do what the coaches demand, and energy is going to be demanded in our program. Ed, right in the middle. Um, is, is this the vision that you had after you left USC for the next time that you would get a yeah. head coaching chance? Is, is, have there even been changes from, from that time? And, sure. and what, if any, are there changes from your time as an interim at, at USC? Yeah, I, I think the word confidence. You know, uh, when I took it over at USC uh, – I had some things that I wanted to try, and I had tried before, and I saw them work, so I feel more confident today than I was uh, back then at USC. It was There was a lot of unknowns. Uh, today, uh, today I think there's more known things about my job than what I, what I got to get done. I know the expectations of LSU. I feel very familiar from being in the state of Louisiana. I feel support from the administration. I feel that our team is behind us. I know that we have a very good football team. I know we have a very tough schedule ahead. But I'm just taking it day by day, uh, being very confident in the system and what we got to accomplish on a daily basis. And then uh, just to look at the notes on, on defense, uh, only allowed five touchdowns all year. Yeah. What has impressed you the most about what Dave Aranda has done? What, what impresses you about him? You know, there's a lot of things. I, I, I can't point out one specific thing. His organization, his structure, his system, his attention to detail, his calmness, his leadership ability, his ability to sit on the sideline and see what the offense is doing to us and make an adjustment the next play, 
if they are hurting us in one area, he can call a defense or make an adjustment to take that away. Uh, it's like a chess match with him. You know, and now he also allows his coaches to coach the way that they want to coach. He has never stepped into a, a, a technique or a decision that, say, the linebacker, outside linebacker coach may have wanted, the defensive back coach wanted. He lets them do it that way. I think he's, he's an overall great coach. And plus, we have great players. <laughs> Coach, uh, are you are you thinking of, if Fournette does play of using him and Geis in the same in, in the backfield at the same time or on the field at the same time? I'd love time? to, love to. I believe in putting the best players on the field and put the ball in their hands, and uh, that's something that uh, can be a possibility in the near future, and it's something we have done in the past. Coach, over over here, uh, there are more. Uh, injuries along the offensive line. Can you update Toby's status and how Will's doing, many of those guys? Yeah, you know, Toby's going to be out for a little bit. And uh, I think Will's going to be out for a little bit here. And uh, but we'll know more about that just as the week goes by. And then on the whole concept of, of rotation, you saw uh, guys like Russell Gage and Jazz Ferguson get yeah. in there and Boston Moreau. Talk yeah. about all those guys getting more experience as the year goes along in the offense. I thought it was great, and here again, you let the you let the uh, assistant coach manage his position. Uh, get more guys play, more guys are happier. They'll come to work happier today. It just stretches the team. Ed, uh, what are your what are your personal memories of playing in the swamp, especially a day game like this one? And also, are you kind of happy that this week? The attention should be maybe a little less on you and more on the team and what it still has in front yeah, of them. I'm all for that. The team first and all for it. And, you know, and I appreciate the attention on me last week. I really do. Cause, and I believe it all stemmed because I'm from the state of Louisiana. And so that meant a lot to me. But i only I only been in the swamp one time, and that's, that's when we was at Tennessee. Oh, a great atmosphere. Uh, you know, I know how much they love their football there. I don't know how much we love our football here, too. And I know we're going to bring some great fans there, and our guys are going to be ready to play. Uh, I like taking the team on the road. I, I enjoy going to a hostile environment. Uh, I think you can use it to your advantage and motivation in your team. Uh, playing in the morning, day or night, it doesn't matter. We'll play in the cow pasture if we're ready to play. Hey, oh, um, on the two players that were ejected, do both of them miss the first half of the next game? How does that – I just wanted a clarification on that. And are y'all planning on appealing either one, just especially yeah. Andy Dodd since with the injuries? on the Yeah, road. we're still in the works on that. And I think everything will work out favorably. I don't know that yet, but we're still in the works. Hey, uh, Ed, to follow up on that, uh, I assume the, the, the targeting call on Xavier came from the, the replay official. Do they, do they let you know that? Does Say that again now. The targeting call on yes. that came uh, from upstairs? Yeah. Uh, do, do they communicate that to you? Yeah, they did. Okay. They, they told me what they were doing, and I watched it. And it yeah. How do you feel that, that – that's a new thing. Okay, well, uh, how do you feel that that's working overall as, as a rule this year? Targeting, uh, I, targeting being allowed to be called upstairs. Yeah, I, I think it, it's needed. You know, I think it's needed. I think guys, they, they've done a good job of communicating it, and, and they're looking at it, and I got no complaints about it. Ed, could you, could you elaborate on the quarterback position from this past week and maybe where he needs to improve? There's no question. There was, <laughs> Yeah, everybody needs to improve. We, we love to hit those long balls. You know, we took shots, we didn't hit them. But, you know, I like it because it's, it's going to show the defense that we're going to stretch the field and we're going to continue to do that, but we need to hit them. You know, and there, there are some things, you know, we came out with several passes. We threw some good passes. We threw some – some not so good passes. And we, we ran some good routes. We ran some not so good routes. And we need to get better. There's a lot of timing issues. There's a lot of uh, preparation into that. And it just doesn't happen overnight. But listen, as much as we can hit the home run ball, we want to hit it. We want to stretch the field. And we want to let guys know that we're going to do it. Hey, Coach, in the back. Uh, you're known as a defensive guy. You obviously have some strong opinions about what offense should be. I saw a clip when you were in L.A. talking about you wanted to get your hands on the quarterback and toughen him up, give him more of a maybe a defensive perspective on playing offense. And obviously, how much of your philosophy comes from defending offenses, seeing you know yeah. how, how how tough your job is if you don't know what's coming? 
You know, I could always go in there and tell them to say, listen, if you get in this formation and you run this play, it's very hard on us. If you get in this personnel grouping and you do these things, it's hard on us on defense. This shift and this motion hurts us. Uh, this play hurts us when we in this defense. But I don't try to meddle too much. I mean, that is not my expertise. I spend most of my time on defense during the day. I really believe in our offensive staff. I think Steve is, you know, he's he's got ice water in his veins. Uh, I told him, I said, you know what you did <laughs> offensively is the most production by any LSU and uh, offense versus SEC team in history. He goes, man, I'm just trying to win. So, but I think we have a, a very humble offensive staff, and I think they're going to continue to come together as the season goes on. They have a tough job this week. And this is going to be a lot tougher defense than we played last week. We'll see. Coach, on your left, uh, you been around a lot of good running backs. What, what does Darius do that makes him special, and does he remind you of anybody? Yeah, he's tough as nails. He runs the ball like Warren Sapp played defense. And uh, he has he has an energy about him, and he has an attitude when he strikes you that he's going to go through you. But you know, I watched the film last night. His ability to jump cut, run to the left, and jump cut to the right is about the, one of the best I've seen. He has some Reggie Bush-like cuts. He's bigger and stronger than Reggie was in college, maybe not quite as fast but he has cuts like Reggie had. On the left, Coach, you've said a couple times today referring to it as a new season. You said that after the game yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that's a message to your players to keep them involved. I'm curious maybe if there's a, a subtle undertone there to pollsters, potentially the committee, if it gets to that point yeah. where you'd like for them to judge you starting now and not what happened in those first few games. i tell you what, I never thought of it. That's a hell of an idea, man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. It's <laughs> good. Coach, over here on the left, what, yeah. what do you see as the biggest difference between Luke Del Rio and Austin Appleby should Luke have to start? You know, I, I just think the confidence that the coaches probably has in Del Rio, they're going to put him back in after an injury. Uh, I haven't studied him that much to tell you the truth. I will know towards the end of the week. But I believe if the head coach has a guy that's injured, and as soon as he comes back, he's going to put him at quarterback, that means that he could probably run his offense better than the other guy. That would be an assumption on my part only. Coach, I guess you talked a little bit about it, but the two games you've lost this year have been away from Tiger Stadium. As the head coach, what do you tell your team toughness about winning on the road in a place like that? Yeah, you know, you know we're, we're going to simulate crowd noise. Uh, starting tomorrow, uh, they're going to hear those Gator songs all week, I promise you. They're going to know them. And uh, we're not going to let it affect us. Uh, but, you know, that it can affect the offense the most. Obviously, when you go in a hostile environment, you have to, you know, have to play calm, concentrate on your technique, your alignment and assignment, not get too crazy, not let the, the crowd affect your play. And it's, it's all about fundamental and techniques anyway. But, you know, you can execute those fundamental techniques on the practice field. Then when you go in the stadium, the environment changes. It shouldn't change your technique, your alignment, and your assignment. So hopefully we mature enough to answer the bell there. Coach, uh, um, with every day having a theme, is that one of the biggest changes you made? Or was there anything like that in the practice structure before with you know the Tell the Truth Day and all these uh, these different labels that each day have well it's something that we do and uh it's something that uh when i had the opportunity to do it i believe that it works and uh there's a lot of ways to skin a cat but this this is the way that i've seen work is the, the the methods i've learned under some great coaches so I, I always said when i get my opportunity to do it that's what i want to do and I, the guys are going to enjoy it it's a fun exciting system I think it uh, it lets the guys play and their own personalities have some fun and they're not so strict on on on, um, on every little thing. You know, the bottom line is, is these guys. I think I think these football players are the most important people that walk in the building. 
Uh, you know, they're the ones that play the, play the games. 